Hands craft wood with care. Shelves stand tall. Books all around. Words, a mystery. Here is how I made a book stand. I've come to the realization that my attention span is rapidly declining. There has been many days where I wake up and scroll through Instagram reels for an hour before actually getting up and starting my day. I didn't really think much about this until recently when I was trying to read an article online about how film photography works. And holy crap, I would get two to three seconds through the article and then magically teleport to my phone and start death scrolling again. And it was at this point that I realized that I'm starting to have a problem. I can't read. Reading is something that requires time, interest, and focus. And it seemed like my constant death scrolling was really starting to take its toll on the ladder. Thus, I started trying to incorporate more reading into my daily routine. So, I bought this. Now, I know what you might be thinking. That's manga, that's not a book. And yeah, you're right. And guess what? This is also a pistol, so shut up. While this may not necessarily be your classic Ernest Hemingway full-fledged novel, at the very least, it's something that has words in it and requires some degree of concentration to get through. And I think we can all agree that that's still a lot better than watching cats dance for two hours straight. I've been reading this volume for a while now, and it's been great, but I'm running into a problem where every time I stop reading and I put the book down, I just manage to lose it somehow. If you've seen my past video on organizing my room with 3D printing, this is probably no surprise to you. It's almost as if some magic genie just kind of takes my things when I'm not looking and shuffles them around, except that genie happens to be a tiny Asian man with short-term memory loss and not actually a genie. As I always say, I don't know why I said that, this is my first time saying this, the best way to not lose things is to give them a home. And that's what the topic of today's video is about. Giving this swell fellow a place to live when I'm not reading. <laughs> I didn't want to go out of my way and buy an actual book stand, so the first thing I did was search online for 3D models that I could just 3D print at home. I found this really pretty looking stand designed by NGK Nam on Thingiverse and gave this a try. It looked really pretty and I thought it'd be perfect because it was specifically designed for manga. So I printed it out, came out really easily in three parts, but I noticed a problem as soon as I put my book in there. If you're an avid reader and you have multiple books, this stand is beautiful and very functional. However, if you're like me and you're illiterate and have book and not books, the book just tends to fall over. This was no good, and this is where the Boeing engineer in me came out. I've never worked at Boeing, by the way. I'm just really bad at building things. I decided to design and build my very own book stand geared towards holding less books. It's absolutely absurd that in 2024, you need multiple books to actually use a modern book stand effectively. I want to create a book stand that allows a book to stand in solitude, confidently, majestically, and not horizontally. With my mission now decided, I put my design hat on and hit the books. The first part of the design process is always about defining your design philosophy. Do you want something functional, minimalistic, complex, perhaps unfinished? Having these principles in mind as early as possible help contribute to your product's identity. In my case, I wanted to optimize for three principles. One, functionality. The goal of this project is ultimately to solve a problem. I want to make sure that a book can stand in the book stand without needing a full rack. Two, accessibility. I want to make sure that this project is something anyone can reproduce without much effort because I don't want to put that much effort. Three, scalability. I want this design to work with one book, two book, three book, n book. The idea is that even if I become a manga scholar, I won't need to redesign this thing every single time. Now that we have finished the first part of the design process, defining our design philosophy, it's time for us to move to the second and more important part of the design process, which is throwing all of that out and stealing someone else's idea. When I was ironically death scrolling through Instagram one night, I came across this advertisement by Bungu that had a book stand that basically solved the exact problem that I was trying to solve. The design is pretty simple. It uses these levers at the top of the stand, and when you slide a book in, the lever moves up and the book is kept in place by the adjacent levers. So yeah, I just kind of ended up buying one of these. Uh, thanks for watching. Just kidding, you thought I could afford one of those for $22, not including shipping? That's worth more than my entire book collection.
While I didn't end up buying one of these, I got inspired by the lever concept and figured I could probably reproduce the mechanism, the dark pair way, a lot cheaper. What was that one quote from Picasso? Like, good artists copy, great artists like steal and do OnlyFans? Now that I had an idea of the mechanism, which I totally conjured up by myself, it was time to start picking materials. The book stand on Bungu, designed by Light Hit Labs, or however the hell you say that, seems to be made of giant bases of solid plastic, from what I can tell. And in my case, this is not going to work, because I'm going to be using FDM 3D printing to make some of the parts, which means that if I was to print a giant face like that, it would be really slow, and also use a lot of plastic, which is super bad for the environment, which I totally care about, by the way. This was one of my big gripes with the design by NGK Nam as well. The author tried to add some holes to the actual print in order to make it print faster and use less material, but even then it still took a really long time and used a lot of plastic. I ended up deciding to use two materials, the first one being 3D printed PLA plastic, which we're pretty used to on this channel, and the second being wood sticks. I figured I could use this combination of materials to create a very easy scaffold that was very material efficient and also would make assembly very easy. So at a high level, Choosing this design approach has these benefits. The first is that we don't need to use much filament or actually many wooden dowels either because we're using a scaffold. This allows us to create large structures without necessarily having to use a ton of material to close off faces unnecessarily. The second benefit that we kind of get as a bonus from that is that the book stand will be very light as there's not too much material. Another benefit is that wooden dowels are really cheap. You can get a ton of them on Amazon for like $10. And they're pretty easy to work with as well. They're a lot easier to cut than metals. The final perk that we get is that the design will be very easy to adjust for different sizes. So if you want to have a book stand that fits a ton of books, you could just elongate the wooden dowels that you're using. Or if you want to fit larger books, you can also increase the height as well. With all the materials figured out, I hopped into Fusion 360 and started doing my thing. I first began with the overall structure of the book stand, which is kind of the main scaffold, if you will. This would just kind of outline the general shape of the book stand, and I also made sure that there was an opening at the top such that we could actually fit larger books in if we wanted to. At this point, I definitely had a box, but it was becoming clear to me that we're going to need some supports to make sure that the book doesn't fall through the bottom or the sides. I decided to approach this by designing this connection piece that kind of looks like Birdo, and it basically allows two wooden rods to be joined together at a perpendicular angle. And this allows me to basically create different supports across the whole scaffold. I placed enough of them such that no books would fall out, but also not too many so that we're still being stingy with material. You've probably noticed by now that the back of the book stand is just a gaping wide hole. And we've left this open because we need space to actually put the hard part of the design, which is the lever mechanism that we totally thought of by ourselves. To be totally honest, when I was looking at the Bungu or Lihit Labs stand, I wasn't really able to make out what was going on within the levers because they're opaque. Instead of trying to copy what they did exactly, I decided to take the strategy Apple has been using on the last couple generation of iPhones and just make the functionality the same, maybe a little worse, and make it look different. I ended up messing around in Fusion 360 and landed on this caveman hook design. It's not the most complicated, but it kind of does the job. Basically, when there's no books around, the hook will just kind of rest due to gravity against this top wooden dowel here. And when a book is placed in, it'll swing back, make room, and the adjacent hooks will hold the book up. While this definitely wasn't the most beautiful looking mechanism, it was really simple and doesn't take too much filament to actually print. So we'll see if it works. After figuring all that out, all I needed to do was actually mount this mechanism onto the frame. And I just did that using the Birdo pieces from before. And voila, we end up with this. Now that the blueprints, or in this case, white prints, were completed, it was time to drag this thing out of my very deranged brain and bring them into the real world. First, I kicked up my 3D printer and got those parts going in the oven. In the meantime, I bought these $9 wooden dowels from Amazon and started cutting them to spec. For some reason, cutting the wooden dowels was a lot harder than I expected. I'm not sure if it was because my saw blade was dull or if my technique was bad or if these are just some of the strongest wooden sticks known in humanity, but it was pretty freaking difficult. 
I was completely drenched in sweat by the end of the process, but I did eventually get the dowels cut, sanded them down, and cleaned them up. In the meantime, I was battling a lot of problems with 3D printing these parts for some reason. When they came out, I would test fit them with the wooden dowel, and they'd either be really, really tight or really, really loose. And each time I had to go back and adjust the whole size a little bit and then reprint them. And it was a super huge pain. I did it like six times. In retrospect, if I was actually competent, I probably should have just 3D printed a test brick that had a variety of different holes that I could test fit before actually designing the thing. But, uh, you know, hindsight 69, as they say. Eventually, I got most of the core parts of the scaffold printed. But as I started to print the hooks, my printer kept jamming. And this happened multiple times. And I think it's probably because I haven't done maintenance in my printer in quite some time. With that said, I needed these hooks pretty soon to actually make this video. And I didn't have the time to diagnose my 3D printer and figure out what was going on there yet. Luckily, today's sponsor, PCBWay, came to the rescue. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for anything PCB manufacturing and assembly. You may remember them from my last video where they helped me create a circuit board for my tiny Japanese vending machine. On top of PCB-related services, they also have CNC and 3D printing services, which I got to leverage for this project. All I had to do was upload the STL file for the bookstand hook onto their website, pick my material and color, and then the quantity, and hit purchase, and I was pretty much good to go, and ended up with this package at my doorstep a few days later. They packaged all of these parts very carefully and meticulously, and everything came in pristine condition. When I opened up the parts, I was super surprised at how good the quality of these prints were. I've been printing on my home printer for a while now, and seeing these parts showed me that I'm probably doing something wrong at home. These parts had no layer shifting, no stringing, were really smooth, and to be honest with you, I don't think I'd be able to tell they were FDM 3D printed unless I was looking super carefully. If you don't have a printer at home, definitely consider PCBWay for all your 3D printing needs. Even if you do have a printer at home, like me, I would definitely still consider them for printing anything more difficult, maybe too large for your home build volume, or maybe even filaments that you wouldn't want to print at home usually, like ABS. Those fumes are nasty. If you're interested in trying out PCBWay for your next project, head to the description to learn more. With PCBWay coming in really clutch for the 3D printed hooks, we had all the parts now, so it's time for the fun part. Assembly. Assembly was pretty straightforward since I just had to combine the joints and rods together according to the design that I had in Fusion 360. This really reminded me of building Lego kits as a kid, so I found it really enjoyable. Taking the time to get the hole sizes right for the plastic joints was definitely the move, as it made assembly a lot easier. I didn't have to actually sand any of the dowels, everything just kind of fit as it should. At the end of it all, we finally had the finished product in all of its glory. And now, the moment we have all been waiting for. While this contraption did work, there are a couple of downsides to my design that make it slightly worse than the one on Bungu. First, the levers in the original design on Bungu actually fall back into place when you pull the book out of position due to gravity, which is pretty elegant. In my design, you need to manually push the hooks back into place, which is pretty annoying. The reason my hooks don't fall back in place is because I very stupidly aligned the resting dowel directly on top of the rotation point, which means that the hook is pretty stable when it's in the back position. If I shifted the top dowel a little bit over, I think it probably would have been unstable enough such that the clip or the hook wants to fall back into place. But uh, you live and you learn. The second issue was that even with the fitted holes and the joint connections, some of the dowels would still occasionally fall out if you were too rough with the whole thing. The culprit here was mainly the burdo pieces since I think I made the mouth part a bit too shallow. Adding some depth here definitely would have helped. A simple solution to all this though is just to add some super glue at the connection points as well and that pretty much makes it strong enough to hold its own pretty well. With that said, that just about completes the build. If you got this far in the video, thank you so much for watching and thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. As always, if you want to build this contraption yourself at home, 
There will be a link to the STL files for free in the description. So yeah, pair 